I loved the first session after my keynote speech uh, and um, getting to interact with people I haven't seen in a while and finding out about what's going on. Marion Jansen, who used to be at the ILO, who's now at ICT and who's going to be part of the policy panel tomorrow, she tweeted what I, uh, what I said in my presentation about the importance of small and medium-sized enterprises. So these personal interactions are, um, are invaluable. I focus uh, mostly on Sub-Saharan Africa these days. And um, so by Industry 4.0, I think you mean artificial intelligence and the automation of manufacturing. Um, I think in low-income countries uh, that haven't done a whole lot in terms of industrializing yet, the impact um, it may not be that great. Um, what I hope is that these new technologies can be used um, also by small and medium-sized enterprises um, to, to make uh, exporting easier, for example, and uh, across, especially across borders within Africa. Um, and, you know, this makes even more important the advice the, or the, the, the goals that African governments have of investing in infrastructure, investing in roads, investing in communication, opening up a competition in the communication sector. Uh, all these things are really important. I mean, uh, you can plug in a 3D printer anywhere, but if the electricity is always going off, for example, then it's not going to work. So I don't think, I mean, I, I think it limits somewhat the scope for labor-intensive manufacturing going forward, but there's no reason these technologies can't be used as well in Africa. And Africa's growing consumer base may mean that some, some companies using these artificial intelligence um, um, technologies will end up moving their bases or some of their bases to Africa where uh, consumption is growing very rapidly. The structural transformations we're seeing in low-income countries are, are, um, are raising up incomes at the bottom of the distribution. So I don't think yet there have been any major uh, distributional implications of the structural change. Um, that, though, uh, depending on how technology plays out, uh, it will probably be true that the most educated um, and the most skilled in low-income countries will benefit the most from advances in technology. So there's the potential for income distribution to widen, but I don't think that it has yet as a result of structural transformation. If anything, it may have become better because people are leaving agriculture and doing things that are earning them higher income. We have a new PhD program in economics and public policy uh, at Tufts University, and I, ha and I am the director of that program. And um, I have uh, a woman f uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo who's, who came because she's interested in structural transformation. Uh, she's doing a lot of work on industrial zones in Vietnam and Tanzania and Ethiopia, trying to understand uh, the extent to which they've been able to promote industrialization and the impacts that these zones have had on um, domestic firms and domestic workers. And I have a, another woman who came from Egypt this year who will be working with me. And we just got a, a large grant from um, the, a private enterprise development limited program that's funded by DFID um, to look at these issues in great detail in both Ethiopia and Tanzania. And we got another grant from DFID uh, to continue the work that I did with uh, Danny Roderick and Jinshan Diao on structural transformation, uh, not just in Africa, but in general. So I plan to continue working on these issues uh, probably until I retire. <laughs> <laughs>